it's now my absolute pleasure to introduce you all to the Flora system. Uh, the Flora system uh, is a set of uh, tools inside of Houdini, or rather a framework for creating plants, foliage, and vegetation. And uh, it really kind of comes off of the back of uh, years of research and development that I did uh, into building these kinds of tools uh, in, uh, for clients and for myself uh, in Houdini in the past. So I designed the Flora system uh, and co-developed it along with Fika Postmess and Tillman Milch throughout the course of Project Pegasus development. And we built everything from the ground up uh, for Project Pegasus. So uh, why did we decide to do something so crazy? Why did we decide to sort of create this burden for ourselves of building uh, a foliage system uh, in a matter of uh, months uh, at the same time as trying to use it to populate the world? Well, basically that stemmed out of a dissatisfaction with the existing options. Um, Houdini is the most powerful procedural tool on the planet. It's got the most amazing nodes, um, but it's kind of a little bit lacking in the uh, vegetation department. Um, you know, you've got the L systems node and you've got the lab uh, tree tools. But to tell you the truth, the L system node and L systems in general are just cumbersome, unwieldy and hard to use. And they only really deal with the uh, the kind of growing of the structure anyway, not with the other elements of making game ready plants. And uh, the lab tree tools, while very cool, are more of a kind of a powerful toy than an actual suitable sort of production ready pipeline tool that you might use in a real game production. So uh, what is Flora? Well, Flora is a framework, like I mentioned previously, that uh, is a sort of a node-based set of tools uh, inside of Houdini, of course, of course, it's node-based, that uh, allows you to uh, describe and define the behavior of plants, but at a very, very uh, sort of detailed level, uh, with very explicit control over um, the way that the plant is behaving at every stage of its growth. Um, you know, we, we looked at the kind of direct modeling approach and the simulation style approach of modeling plants. And you can clearly see both have their, their, their strengths. Uh, the direct modeling is you have full control over what you're doing at, uh, at all points in time. And uh, with the sort of simulation based approach, you have a very small set of parameters that can lead to a very high degree of complexity and realism. Um, so we wanted to take the strengths of these two approaches and really marry them together, create something wholly new and, and sort of just better than e either just on its own. And uh, we think we've succeeded. So Flora uses the concept of delayed evaluation. Um, so we flip the Houdini paradigm of working down on its head. And instead, what you do is ahead of time, you define the behavior of the tree for a set of modules um, or the plant or the growing organism uh, for a set of modules. And then we have this kind of state tree or behavior tree um, that allows you to define exactly what the plant is doing uh, and exactly when uh, at every moment throughout its life. Uh, all of those instructions are then sent to uh, a simulation uh, kind of node or context, uh, which evaluates that for every growing point on the tree at every step. So you have on the one hand, this predetermined pre-programmed behavior, which is explicitly controlled and directed by the artist. And then on the other hand, you have this simulation context where you're able to inject uh, any kinds of uh, simulation uh, sort of factors that you might want to, such as other objects in the world, wind, uh, and other sort of simulation elements like uh, tropisms, uh, figma tropism, phototropism. So all of that is built in and you kind of get it for free. Uh, and you just have a slider uh, saying, how much do I want this to stick to the explicitly defined structure that I've created for this node tree? And how much do I want specific modules to sort of uh, throw all caution to the wind and uh, get perturbed to their, uh, their fullest extent by all of these outside factors. Um, so of course, when you're doing all of this in this kind of context, if you grow multiple trees together uh, and they're all interacting and competing for light and shade, um, you, know, you get all of those kinds of benefits like crown shyness and plants growing up other plants or on objects. So um, that's really the power of the simulation that we wanted to unlock, but we really didn't want the simulation to be this kind of chaotic place where the artist loses control. So um, we think we've done a really good job of marrying both of these two aspects together. That being said, um, we're still very early uh, in the production of the Pegasus tooling. Um, so they're very much prototype tools and we're not, even though it's not ready for mass adoption, um, it was used for all of the plants and foliage that we created on Project Pegasus. Um, so it's just as capable uh, at creating trees um, that you know fit for game environments um, that run well and look good as, as it is for creating sort of high fidelity, uh, super uh, realistic, uh, high production value trees as a, uh, for, for sort of pre-rendered applications. Um, 
So it's really a very powerful tool. Um, and for the future, kind of looking forwards, um, we'll be looking at how we can make it GPU accelerated um, to make things uh, be basically be a remaining sort of real time while you're editing. Right now it's very fast um, because we try to be smart about how we built it, but um, we're not taking advantage of GPU acceleration yet. So that's going to be another orders of magnitude improvement. Um, so there's lots of sort of work to be done here to really turn this into a, a production ready toolkit. Um, you know, we could give it to studios now and I'm sure you could start using it today, but um, then, you know, everyone would have their own version of Flora and there wouldn't be this kind of one uh, unified version that was well supported. So um, maybe we'll continue developing it as an open source project. Maybe we'll uh, just be doing it in our spare time, but hopefully, hopefully it will be made a uh, first party feature of Houdini. And uh, now I'm gonna pass you over to Fika, who's gonna tell you a little bit more uh, in detail about what it is uh, or how it technically works. Um, so yeah, thanks a lot.